Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God that he is so faithful, my brothers and sisters, that he will not disappoint you at all. He will never leave you nor forsake you. But most important, he will never fail you. He will never give up on you. Why? Because he loves you too much. He loves you too much. He is faithful, even though that we might remain faithless. He will always remain faithful. The word of God tells us in the book of Numbers that he is not a man. Why? Because he is a spirit. Because why? He cannot lie. And the, and the next verse after that, it says that he cannot even change his mind. Which meaning is that God is not an Indian giver. Which meaning, again, that the God we serve, the God we praise, is not an Indian giver. Whatever it is that he started your life, it's already finished. It's already completed. Whatever dream or vision that he has allowed you to see, my brothers and sisters, it will come to pass and it has to manifest. It has to manifest. Not on your time. But his time, that's what kind of God we serve. That's what kind of God we praise. That's why praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time. In all the time, God is good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you peacefully and humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today. It's going to keep us full and keep us satisfied. There's no other place, Father God, that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, just lifting you up, glorifying your name, magnifying your name, and shouting on your holy name, Father God, because you are our everything. Father God, you have your way in your house today. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Father God, allow, allow the Holy Spirit to move through this place right now. Allow your presence to move through this place right now. Allow your love to move through this place right now. Allow the angels to join with us in praise and worship mm -hmm. right now, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for how awesome, how mighty, how powerful you are today, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Father God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're about to do, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, you are welcome. You're invited right now today to enter into your house right now right here in your sanctuary right now, Father God, and my sister's homes, into my sister's life, into my brother's homes, into my brother's life. Father God, I'm asking you to show us how to love even more today. Father God, I'm asking you to fill us up more with the Holy Spirit today. Father God, we want more of you and less of ourselves today. Father God, I know that this word is going to be for somebody. I know that someone's going to receive this message today, God. Oh, God, I believe today that someone's going to call out your name today, God, because they want to be healed today. They want to be delivered today. And the angels are already on standby. They are already rejoicing right now because I don't know who it is, but someone's going to call out your name today. Father God, let your will be done through this sermon, through this sermon today, Father God. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we're available for praise, that we're available for service, that we're available for the kingdom right now. Holy Spirit, you're welcome to enter into the house of the Lord right now, into the sanctuary right now, on this YouTube channel right now, on this platform right now. Holy Spirit, you're welcome to be invited into my brother's home, into my brother's life, into my sister's home, into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to fill us up more with the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now. I'm asking you to protect us right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts right now so we can hear whatever it is the Word of God is trying to show us and tell us right now. Have your way 
with us right now, Holy Spirit. Comfort us right now because you are a great comforter. If there's anything that we need to be aware of, Holy Spirit, please just give us a little bump right now. Let us know what we need to be aware of. Give us a heads up right now. Father God, we just come to you, Father God, today in agreement, Father God, believing and trusting in your words, Father God, and your promises. Father God, Father God, I need you to show up and show out to this servant through this sermon today. And we give you thanks right now. We give you praise right now. We give you glory right now in your holy, precious, mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just like praise is an everyday thing, praying is an everyday thing, repentance is also an everyday thing. Why? We all make mistakes. We all drop the ball. Neither one of us on this planet called Earth can say that we're perfect. Because we're not. We're not at all. So that's why repenting is an everyday thing. It is necessary that we repent. So we, so we won't have to continue to make the same mistakes over and over again. So when we repent, we rely and we depend on Jesus. I rely and depend on him every day. Because why? I fall short every day. I'm not perfect at all. So if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, you can't keep it real and be honest with nobody. So I need my keep it real brothers and sisters to join me in repentance right now, if that's okay with you. Lord Jesus, I ask of you to please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Mm -hmm. Father God, please forgive me all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Pray up out through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the second chance. Thank you, Father God, for the new opportunity to come through. Father God, you didn't have to do it today, but you did anyway. So I just want to give you thanks for it. I'm going to give you praise for it, and I'm going to give you glory for it. But, Father God, before I get started, there's something that's always in my mind about you. There's something that stays in my spirit about you. There's something that stays in my heart about you. There's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify I shout out your holy name, exalt your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you each and every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more of you and less of myself, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag, that's why I boast about you, that's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now, from the bottom of your heart, that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. Amen? Amen. I want to get into this word about a double-minded person. And what I mean by that is, sometimes when we go through a bad relationship with someone, and God knew that the relationship was bad. So he had to cut the relationship off. He had to break it up because someone was just too freaking nasty, too freaking disrespectful to you, my brothers and sisters. They was not bearing any fruit. They done more harm than they did good to you. And God noticed that the relationship or the marriage or the friendship was not going anywhere. So he had to cut it off because you was giving them too much of your love. You was giving them too much of your oil. You was giving them too much of you, and they was not giving you nothing. And somebody knows exactly what I'm talking about. But in the process of God cutting it off, in the process of God saying enough is enough, he set you to a side, my brothers. He set you aside, my sisters. And that time that he had you set mm -hmm. aside, he was healing you. He was bringing you back together piece by piece, layer by layer. But in the midst 
of all of that. God will test you just to see how far you have came. God will test you to see are you still in your feelings towards your ex. He will just see. And what and what will end up happening is your ex will always try to come back in your life some type of way. It might be a brother might show you how he don't change or how he don't got himself together or how he don't got his physique. Or it might be a woman might show you something that to try to think you to make you think that you are missing something. She might show you a picture that you never seen before. You're like, wow, that's you now? But in the midst of all of that, you'll be a plump fool to go back to a person that destroyed you. You'll be a plump fool to go back to a person who didn't give you no love, who disrespected you, who broke you down all the way down to your ankles, to your socks, my brothers and sisters. You'll be, you'll be a plump fool to go back to somebody that you never got any love or respect out of him or her. You'll be a plump fool to go back to somebody that neither one of y'all was even bearing fruit. You was the fruit. You was the blessing. You was the anointing. You was the protector. But they give you nothing. But they tell the kids. Because why? They were just plumb nasty. Plumb disrespectful to you. But you'll be a plump fool to go back and God will test you in that area just to see how far you have came. How strong you are. Are you double-minded? But I'm talking to some brothers right now today. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to some sisters right now today. I don't know who I'm talking to. And what that person tried to do, you told that person, I don't have feelings for you anymore. Oh, help me, Jesus. And when they realize that you didn't have feelings for them no more, and you told them to go and mind their business, they were sick to their stomach because they thought in every way, every possible way, when they try to show up back in your life that you was going to break down and say, oh yeah, I give you another chance. I give you another shot at it. But when you told him and when you told her that you don't have feelings for them anymore, they couldn't take it. They couldn't stand the rejection that you opposed to him and her. See, everybody can't handle rejection. And that's what God was trying to test you in that area just to see how far you have changed. He had to test you in that area just to see how strong you really were. He had to test you in that area just to see was you a double-minded person because anyone that go back to a person that destroyed you, they mean that you are double-minded. They mean that you are unstable. And whenever it is that you are double-minded, you are unstable, guess what they're going to do? They're gonna, they're gonna, they will destroy you even more hurt you even more and break you down all the way down to your pinky toes even more. But when you told him and when you told her go mind your business that you was better oh help me Jesus that you was better off without them that you are happy now that you are prospering now that there's nothing they can do that even can change your mind to go back to him or her. Boy I can tell you right now they were sick as a sick puppy because they knew they had a shot at you but guess what what you what you did was shot that shot down in the moment that you shot that shot down they realized you weren't the same person anymore they realized right now they're sick as a dog right now because they thought they had you wrapped around their finger they thought that you were so much in love with them that they thought they can do anything to you and that you always going to be right there for them. But you say, mm -mm, I ain't having that no more. I don't have feelings for you. That will hurt the most. You tell the person that you don't spend a long time with, that you don't have feelings for them anymore. They sick. When you told them, go mind your business, Go ahead and mind your business. You and I will never get back together. That is over with. They sick. They can't handle that type of pain. They didn't know who you were. But they didn't know how God was rebuilding you, reshaping you in the process of your hurt and your pain. See, that's what you had to go through in that season. But in this season right now, you are a different type of man. You are a different type of woman. And they cannot get to you the way how they used to get, get to you, my brothers and sisters. 
They thought that they still had you. They thought they still had a shot. They still thought they had a chance. And to you, like, mm -mm, ain't none of that happening here no more. I don't look at you like that no more. I don't have feelings for you like that no more. See, when you don't have feelings for a person no more, that means there's no love there. That means it's nothing there. That means they, they really don't exist in your life anymore. You will speak to them, hey, how you doing? But you say, go ahead and mind your business. I ain't got time to hear that lala what you talking about. I ain't got time to hook up with you. I ain't got time to be chit-chatting with you on the telephone. It's nothing mm -hmm. between you and I because I don't see you like that. I don't look at you like that. And I don't have feelings for you like that. Go ahead and go find somewhere else to play with because I don't have time. Oh, help me, Jesus. I don't have time for you like that anymore. You and I are done. You and I are finished. What we had or used to have, guess what it's called? It's called history because that's what you are to me now, history. There's no present and there's no future between you and I. The only thing that we have is a past. And that's why I'm looking at you in the mirror as you are in my past. That's why I look at the rearview mirror. I look one time and I don't look back no more because you don't belong to me anymore. I don't have feelings for you like that no more. Oh, help me, Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who this word for today, but someone just told somebody that, and that's what God had to test you. Whenever you realize that an ex came back, that person was sent back for a test just to see where you stand at in your words. It was a test just to see where you stand at in your faith. It was a test just to see are you really strong enough to move on so God can bless you and give you the person that he know that you need? Not what you want, but what you need. It was only a test, my brothers and sisters. And I know that someone passed that test today. I don't know who I'm talking to right now today, but if that's you right now, you got to say, thank you, Jesus, for reshaping me. Thank you, Jesus, for getting me back together. Thank you, Jesus, because I was blind. But hallelujah, I can see right now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's get into this word and see what this word had to say. Can you please turn your back to James chapter 1 and we're going to read verse 8. There's James chapter 1 and we're going to read verse 8. If you haven't, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. He is a double-minded, which means you don't know if you're coming or going. You don't know for sure, are you really over this person tonight? Now, it's time for some of y'all need to be honest with y'allself because some of y'all keep going back and forth. Should I give him another shot? Should I give her another shot? So we make this thing work? But I want y'all to sit there and just take some time out for yourself. And you know who you are. I want you really just look at everything. Get your piece of paper if you have to. Write all the good and write all the bad. But if that bad outweighs that good, why in the world that you want to give this person another shot when you know that person going to do it to you again? It doesn't make any sense. It don't make sense. It don't add up to go back to something when you're going to end up with nothing. It don't make any sense to go back to something and you're going to be in the same situation, but even worse. It doesn't make any sense to go back to something when neither one of y'all had a pot to pee in the first place. It don't make no sense to go back to nothing but both of y'all were struggling, you were hurting, and you're suffering all day long. It doesn't make any sense to go back to something when you stayed up crying all times of the night, all times of the day. It doesn't make no sense to go back to somebody that was so nasty to you, so disrespectful to you, who didn't care anything about you or your feelings or your emotions. It doesn't make any sense to go back to nothing. Come on, my brothers and sisters. It's time for somebody to wake up and say, I don't have feelings for you anymore like that. Go ahead and mind your own business because I can do bad by myself. I can do bad by myself. And if you know that this word is for you, and you know Jesus is talking to you, go and hit Jesus' like button right now. Go and hit the subscribe button right now. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. 
And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always continue to honor him. Always put him first place. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. You continue to trust him even though you don't see things adding up. It's not making sense. It's not clear to you. You continue to trust him. You continue to hold on to Jesus' unchangeable hands. And don't you dare let it go because you never know tomorrow or the day might be your day. But don't dare let his hands go. You continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep on in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mm -hmm. name. God bless you. Amen and amen.